In part one, we got our game going by drawing the ball and the two pieces of the wall below it. Now, let's make the ball move. On every frame, I'm going to take ball X and add something to it. How much? I don't know. I'll stick it in a variable. So ball X equals ball X plus ball speed. And we'll create a variable called ball speed. And I don't know, let's say five pixels. So in every frame, it moves five pixels to the right. Success. Okay. So now we're ready to start thinking about the game. When I hit the space key, I want the ball to stop moving to the right and I want to start moving down. So how do we make that happen? Well, it means that the ball is either moving to the right or the ball is moving down. It's only doing one of those two things and we have to keep track of which it is in any given moment. So I'm going to create a new variable. This variable is of type Boolean. That's a funny word, it's named for a guy. It's named for George Bull. And a Boolean variable can only have two values, true and false, the reserved keywords. So let's call this ball is dropping. And initially it is false. But if ball is dropping is true, that tells us that we've hit the space bar and the ball is going down. So I'm now gonna start doing a bunch of stuff into draw. Tell you what, let's put it right here at the top of draw. I'm going to say, if ball is dropping. Now this is how I test for something. I say if, and then I write something I wanna test for. Whatever goes between the parentheses here is something that's either true or false. If it's true, then what comes after gets executed. If it isn't true, I can say else, which means otherwise, and then whatever comes after the second thing in here will be executed. So if ball is dropping is true, we'll do this stuff. If ball is dropping is not true, we'll do this stuff. And in fact, I have them backwards. If the ball is not dropping, I want it to move horizontally. So I'll just copy and paste. If it is dropping, I want it to move vertically. So I will add ball speed to Y. So ball is dropping right now is false, so nothing should happen. But let's set ball is dropping to true and see if that makes the ball drop vertically. I'll run it again. Beautiful. Now, I'm going to change a couple of things here. Notice that I'm saying ball Y equals ball Y plus ball speed. There's a shortcut for that, and we will see these shortcuts. Plus equals means exactly the same thing. Plus equals says add ball speed to ball Y. And so I'll put a plus equals here too. It just makes it a little tighter. So let's set ball is dropping back to false. And now we need to set that to be true when I hit the space key. How do I know when I hit the space key? Well, just as if you have a draw, processing we'll call it for every frame, if you have a routine called key typed, processing will call that anytime a key is pressed. How do we know which key is pressed? It sets a variable named key to the name of the thing that got pressed. So I'm going to say if key is equal to space, and I'm going to change these, then ball is dropping is true. Notice we don't actually type the word then, it's implied. And we'll see the key, we'll see the if statement in great detail. So again, just let it wash over you. Space, we actually write a space as a space, but between single quotes. And we don't write the word equal to, it would be really nice to use the equal sign here, right? To say if key equals the space, but we're using the equal sign. <laughs> we're using it for assignment. So almost every programming language around uses two equal signs. That's how you test is equal to. It's a little goofy, I know, but you get used to it in no time. So let's run this program and see if that works. The ball is moving, I'm gonna hit the space bar now. All right, so when I hit the space bar, Ball is dropping becomes true, and now we start adding to Y rather than X, and now. All right, so this is working great. So we now just have a couple of things left to do. One thing is, when I play the game, as soon as the ball disappears off the screen, the game is over. I want the ball to restart, right? I wanna play over and over again. So let's make that happen. What I wanna do is I wanna put some tests into draw to see if the ball has gone off screen. And then we'll test to see if we have a goal or not. Draw is now starting to get pretty big and it's got a lot of different stuff in here. We've got some testing about the ball. 
We've got things that we're going to draw, and soon we're going to have things to test if we're scoring and restart the ball. So I'm going to break draw up into three little pieces. I'm going to break it up into move ball, test ball, and draw everything. So what are these routines? And, and of course, the stuff that I've just pushed down, this is like some weird fragmentary thing right now. So don't worry about that. Just focus on this. When we call routine like size, processing says, no trouble. I know what size is. That's one of mine. I'll run it. When we call something like move ball, it says, I don't know what that is. You better give me one or I'm going to get lost. So let's go ahead and give it one. I'm going to take the stuff we have here and I'm going to call it move ball. I'm just going to package it up in its own little package between curly braces. So now these five lines make up move ball. So when draw gets called, it calls move ball. That means it jumps down to here. It does this stuff and then it jumps back. Then it calls test ball. Well, we don't have a test ball yet. So let's make one and it won't even do anything. Great. So nothing happens inside of test ball. It comes back and then it calls draw everything. And that, of course, is our drawing stuff. So let's put that inside of a routine called draw everything. And these are names that I'm making up. You can call these anything you want. And now draw everything is wrapped up in a pair of, per of curly braces. So now things are nicely packaged up, right? Key type takes care of the key stuff. Draw everything takes care of drawing things. Move ball takes care of moving things. And draw is conceptually simple. We can just look at it and see it's doing these three things. We don't have to look at the code and try to figure out what those lines are doing. So I haven't changed the function. I've just moved things around, but let's run it and make sure it's still working. Beautiful. Now that we have the ball moving and responding to the keyboard, we need to write a test to see if we've managed to get it in the goal. We'll do that in part three.